Hello, hungry campers, and welcome to episode 19 of the RV Canucks podcast. I'm Melina. And I'm Dan. And together with our teen and tween girls, we are the RV Canucks, a wily band of RV enthusiasts who want to show you that it is possible to see all of North America on a part-time basis. We talk gear, road trips, reviews, and trip planning advice to help you travel further as weekend warriors, no matter where you live. And we don't shy away from telling you all the mistakes we've made along the way, because let's face it, if you survive it, it always makes a good story, right? Today, we're talking about mistakes that have worked out for the better, specifically when it comes to stumbling on delicious, easy, and comforting camping food cooked in cast iron. If you're a cast iron newbie, stick with us because we'll tell you why we think it's one of the easiest and most versatile ways to cook while RVing and give you five of our go-to favorite cast iron recipes you can try out for yourself on the road. So let's dig in. Maybe we should talk about our less is more mentality when it comes to camping food and supplies yeah so we don't use the fanciest gadgets we don't have a lot of gadgets we try to use things that have more than one purpose is our philosophy in general and so I think what we've done over the years is refine ourselves down to a half a dozen things that we use for camping to cook that that can cook many different things so in our kind of tool bag we have a portable barbecue we've talked about that before we've got a napoleon barbecue with a screw-on canister that sits on the the picnic table and that works pretty good for us the one that comes with the trailers kind of garbage so we got a nicer barbecue Uh, we've got a griddle that goes on the coleman stove which is good for cooking eggs and bacon and and those kind of things we've got a tripod uh that we use and it you can either hang a pod off it it has its own kind of grill rack that hangs down it's adjustable so you can vary the height from the fire we use that a lot for using cast iron which we'll talk about in a little bit We've got nesting pots, so you know the kind of pots where the smaller one goes in the next largest one and so on and so forth, so they stow away nice and neat. We've got a old coffee percolator. It's, it's I a think throwover it's, from my days camping as a kid. My parents used it. It's it's an older one. It's been around. It's got a few dings and scratches in it, but it still gets the job done, and we make cowboy coffee out of that. We've got the collapsible toaster. Going to admit that sometimes, hey, we... We're not using the collapsible toaster. We get the electric toaster and we've got the, uh, we may bring along a crock pot or we may, you know, use a coffee machine. But beyond that, I think we keep it generally pretty simple. Yeah, I think, you know, most of what we have in the RV to cook with or for our supplies that we have is basically stuff that we just took out of the big Rubbermaid container that we took with us when we tent camped and we just kind of used it all. So like when Dan talks like nesting pots, they're like the ones you will find at a Cabela's or at a Canadian Tire that they're like in a drawstring bag that you would throw in your backpack to go like backcountry camping. Like that's what we use for our pots and pans because they're tiny, they're light, they get the job done and they're easy to use, right? Like I don't think you need to go fancy. We don't even really, well, we don't use our microwave in the RV either. You know, we used it the odd time and then Isla put a stick of butter in the microwave to try to defrost it or make it soft in the aluminum wrapper. So that basically destroyed the microwave. Do not recommend. And we took it out and we bought a replacement, which they're not cheap, but I was kind of humming and hawing about whether we even needed a replacement in the first place. And the replacement we got, it doesn't actually, the holes don't line up with the trim that goes around to hold it into the wall. So this summer, we've basically just taken the microwave out. Like, honestly, I can think of maybe five times that we've used the microwave. And then like a ray of sunshine from heaven, we were bestowed with a cast iron pot set. And so in any case, it, it's got a traditional pot and then the lid doubles as either a lid or a frying pan and I think since we've started using that we haven't even used the frying pan that's even in the trailer but what this lets you use is it lets you use it as a frying pan lets you use it as a pot or it lets you use it as a dutch oven Mm -hmm. so I would say for sure and I think we mentioned this on our holiday gift giving guide because we did profile cast iron very quickly on that episode like if you're gonna go with a starter set and you don't have any cast iron like that's the one to go with because it can act as a dutch oven and a skillet and you're only adding two pieces of equipment to your rig and you're probably going to thin out a ton of other things that you probably realize you haven't used yeah okay so tell the fine listeners what's so great about cast iron okay cast iron i didn't realize this till i actually used it myself is actually really easy to keep clean it 
I envisioned that it would have all kinds of crud and burnt on stuff stuck to it and it doesn't. You kind of give it a quick bang to knock out the crumbs and what might have fallen off. Maybe you have to knock one or two things off and then you wipe it out with a paper towel. Once it's cooled down, you wipe it out and you give it a quick coating of oil and and Bob's your uncle. You're good to go. Mm -hmm. It's literally that easy. Mm -hmm. It cleans up quicker than putting a paper plate in the fire. For sure. And I think we shied away from cast iron for a long time because our impression, like just having never really cooked with it, like our impression was like, oh, it's so maintenance heavy. You got to, you know, to keep it oiled and to stop it from rusting and all that stuff. And honestly, it couldn't be easier to maintain. And I mean, we're pretty like, I don't think we have any metal utensils really that we use in it. Like we use wood or we use plastic just to kind of if you need to like give a little scrape out. But the thing is, like once you get a good seasoned pan and by seasoned meaning oiled regularly like you're kind of creating like a natural non-stick pan anyway the more you cook in it you know the bacon the chicken the all those other foods kind of help mm-hmm. add more seasoning to it if i was to suggest what you want to get when you go out there and you look for one look for one that's already pre-seasoned that comes yeah. from the store pre-seasoned ready to go something that's got a lid on it so that you can use it kind of like a dutch oven consider a multi-purpose set and you know what if you're not wanting to drop that kind of money keep your eye out at garage sales antique shops secondhand shops they're always Mm -hmm. hanging around out there this is you do not need to drop a lot of money to get something yeah you know for two figures you can get yourself a pre-seasoned pan for sure and i think you know a lot of like antique cast iron like you will find them like we do a ton of antiquing so you see them everywhere and they're rusty as all heck but I will post a video onto the blog because I actually watched a really really good video about how to kind of bring some of these like rusty discarded antique store cast iron sets back to life and cast iron is not necessarily cheap to buy from the store so being able to revive some some older sets and put some life back into them is certainly more economical and probably you know better for the environment and all that so what I really like about cooking with cast iron is the temperature range you can cook with. If you want to sear something, like if you want to really lock in the moisture on a good piece of meat, cast iron is is safe for well upwards of like 500 degrees. So you can like turn up the heat, you can crank it, you can stick that pot right in the fire and like sear some steaks and then you can kind of dial it back a little and like throw some potatoes in there and cook the rest of your meal. Like it's really versatile. You can use it on the fire, you can use it in the fire, you can use it in your oven, you can use it on the stovetop. Like there's, it goes from place to place to place and you don't have to worry about handles melting and all kinds of other stuff. So I like that that you can do so much with varying degrees with one set. And part of that is when we use our tripod because we have the like an adjustable chain on the side of this tripod so we can lower the grate down into the fire or up as needed to adjust the temperature. It's it's a little more work than a set it and forget it oven, but you're outside anyway. You're chilling by the fire. Like where else are you going? You're hanging out at your campsite. So if you need to check the temperature a few times on your cast iron pot, you're really not, it's really not that labor intensive, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, you're just chilling. You're having your beer, playing some ladder ball and you pop your eyes in and keep an eye on it and and it'll come along you don't need to worry about it Mm -hmm. so recipes we thought we would talk a bit about some of our go-to recipes and these are ones we make a lot we make them consistently we've adapted them or we've invented them and we've just kind of found what works for us and the one thing you're going to notice about all of these recipes is the fact that a lot of them will call for things that you're probably already going to have in your trailer because we use a lot of leftovers to make these meals. In any case, head to the blog rvconnects.com. We will detail all of the recipes, all of the measurements, instructions, so you can make them and add to them and make them your own. But for now, I think we'll just give them a quick overview and why we love them. And I think we will start with definitely the girl's favorite, and this is Dan's goat cheese pizza. And this is one that you can make in an oven. You can make it on a barbecue. You can make it on a a grill you can make it in cast iron you can make it lots of places you can make it this friday night if you want to it's that easy Mm -hmm. so it's goat cheese pizza and for the crust what i use is non bread so the non bread's what 12 13 inches across Mm -hmm. that becomes your pizza crust what i like to do with that is i like to just warm up that bread a little bit and maybe a couple of minutes just in wherever you're cooking it the oven the barbecue the cast iron just just to warm it up so we preheat the cast iron yeah preheat the cast iron your stove your barbecue whatever the goat cheese this is the trick the goat cheese you can soften that up so soften up the goat cheese maybe in the microwave or just beside the the stove whatever you're going to soften up the goat cheese so that it becomes spreadable then you take your non 
on bread and I use a soup spoon and I use the back side of the soup spoon to spread out the goat cheese. The goat cheese has to be the first thing that goes down first because once you've got everything else on it, you won't be able to spread the goat cheese. So you're spreading the goat cheese right onto the non bread that's already been warmed up. Then take the pizza sauce and put the pizza sauce on top and just kind of smear that around with the same spoon that you use to get the goat cheese down. Then you're going to put on whatever your toppings are, onions, pepperoni, ham, whatever you want to put on your peppers, pizza, whatever you used... like, pepper, whatever you like on your pizza. Broccoli, cauliflower, like you name it, just whatever yeah. you've got, like chop it up and put it out. And then everyone can, can just decide what they want on their own pizza. Right. And so one thing that I like to do because the girls love this so much is I get them to chop up the vegetables because they really want to have good things on their, their goat cheese pizza. And I get them to chop up a little bit extra. So it's left over for snacks the next day. If you were smart, enough to set some of the bacon aside from breakfast you can put some of that on as well so once you get all your toppings on the last thing that you put on is shredded cheese the shredded cheese holds it all together and so you put that on just like a normal pizza you put it on until the cheese is melted everything's warmed up the bottom is golden and you pull it out cut it in four and you eat it mm -hmm. so what we do with the cast iron like i said we pre-warm the pan and we you we put the lid on it because that just seems to help like add some heat from the top and it just melts the cheese a little bit quicker and it is super tasty okay so one dish chicken thighs and I'm, I'm saying this one dish because it can be an entire meal by itself we tend to serve it with a side dish or two which we'll talk about but it's a fantastic easy to make chicken and bean dish but you've got what you've got is a really kind of sweet and savory sauce on it again preheat the cast iron that's what we do and when that cast iron is just like sizzling we put we put some oil in it to heat that up and you can use olive oil you can use vegetable oil whatever oil you prefer to cook with and just get that pan really sizzling hot and then we throw some chicken thighs in there and you can do bone in skin on chicken thighs but they will take a little bit longer to cook so we tend to do like the boneless skinless just because it, it allows us to get dinner on the table a little bit quicker but you just throw the chicken thighs in there and then uh, brown them up and then what you want to do is you're going to add some chopped onions we just dump in a bunch of honey barbecue sauce garlic powder chili peppers some red pepper flakes salt and pepper and you basically just add it to taste and I'll put some approximate measurements on the blog but basically you just kind of whip it up however you like it if you like it more spicy throw some more red pepper flakes in whatever you decide and then uh, you throw the lid on and you just let it simmer and it will cook that chicken so nice and if it's getting too hot or it's sticking to the pot you just like raise the pot up a little bit or turn the heat down and then when the chicken is cooked you throw some green beans on top put the lid back on and I'm going to say 10 minutes we prefer our green beans like with like a little bit of a crunch like not too soggy so I mean again leave it on for as long as you want till your vegetables are done and there you go you've got a meal it's one pot you could even throw some potatoes in there while the chicken's cooking if you want to go that route normally we serve it with barbecued corn on the cob and like a caesar salad or something yeah and I I've learned that rather than boiling my corn on the cob I just put it on the barbecue and cook it there because that's a whole lot less work than boiling water and creating another pot to clean and everything else which may be common knowledge or like the way, the way everybody else out there does it. But honestly, like, I think probably just because our parents always boiled corn, like we just boiled corn. And it's one of these like aha moments in life when you're like, wait a minute, if you throw it on the barbecue, it actually tastes a whole lot better. Yeah, you don't have to do what your parents did. Yeah, imagine that. <laughs> okay, so tortellini parmesan soup. This one is a fairly new favorite. And I literally make it all the time. I make it all the time. I make it for my friends when they're having a hard day. I make it for us to eat. It is so tasty. There's so many different ways you can do this dish. All you need is literally your pasta, your tortellini. You need a can of diced tomatoes, some tomato paste, uh, chicken stock, and then some veg. So I put in onions and, and bell peppers. So normally what I do is I get like the three pack of bell peppers that have like the red, ye the yellow and orange. And I will chop those up, fry them up in a little bit of oil with the onion. And then when the onions are translucent, then what I do is just throw in a couple of tablespoons of flour and whisk that in and throw in three cups of chicken stock. And I slowly add the chicken stock and whisk it away with the flour. And it kind of thickens up the chicken stock a little bit. And then I just dump in the diced tomatoes, I dump in a little bit of tomato paste, and you throw in the tortellini and then some protein. So 
I don't have any hard and fast rules about the protein. Sometimes I don't even put any meat in it. But if you have bacon left over from breakfast, you can put that in. If you have chicken left over, you can put that in. If you have steak left over, you can put that in. You can literally put, you could throw pepperoni in there from pizza if you have extra pepperoni. Anything Sauce, goes. Sausages goes good. Sausages is amazing in it. So whatever you have left over, meat-wise and veg-wise, throw it in. Like you want some broccoli in there, throw it in. There's There's literally nothing in here that tastes bad. Like you can throw any type of vegetable, any type of meat in there and it tastes amazing. So with all of that liquid, you just throw the lid on, you let it simmer for like eight minutes, 10 minutes, however you like your tortellini done. And then when that's all cooked, you dump in a cup of Parmesan and then I stir in a third of a cup of heavy cream and that just helps thicken it up a little bit. And as soon as you stir in the cheese and the cream, you throw in three cups of spinach and you throw the lid on and you just let the spinach wilt in the heat and you stir it around and you serve it and that's it. And that's literally, I made it this week actually mm-hmm. and there wasn't even leftovers for the next day. I think Isla got maybe like a half a cup in her lunch because that was all that was left and I made enough for probably like 10 people. Yep, it was really good. Okay, so we have haven't talked much about breakfast. A lot of these are dinner options, but Dan makes a fantastic corned beef hash, which usually happens as he's balancing making coffee and I sleep in. So take it away, Dan. Yeah. So I think I kind of discovered that this summer really making this corned beef hash and I did it a couple of times. You know, we like a good bacon and eggs, but you can't have that every single day. And you know, you can only have so many bagels and fruit and cereal and yogurt and everything else. Almost as glorious as the cast iron that came down from heaven or with Santa Claus on the shelves was this Puritan corned beef hash. And that is the basis of this recipe. And it comes in a can, a a soup size can. So usually what I do is I preheat the cast iron. I open up two cans of this and I dump it in the bottom. And then I'll scramble up some eggs. I'll add some onions, some pepper, some cheese, some seasoning. Sausage, maybe. Sausage, honestly, whatever is left over that looks like it could get cleaned up. Broccoli, whatever you would put in an omelet, whatever you want. And then you pour that in, stir it all up, and you put it on your heat, whether it's your, you know, your fire, your stove whatever and you just you kind of let it cook away and you give it a stir and you drink some coffee and chat chat away with your younger daughter Isla because she's the only one who gets up early and (laughs) it can kind of just cook and stay there for whenever people wake up in the morning to be honest with you it Mm -hmm. doesn't take a long time the the corned beef is already cooked so once the eggs are cooked you're ready to go you're just keeping it warm for everybody and if you keep a lid on it it stays nice and moist you use a bunch of stuff up and Mm -hmm. it's kind of nice comfort food Mm -hmm. goes goes good with a cup of coffee and a little bit of toast yeah so maybe we should talk about like spices a little bit because i think we have like a few basic spices that we tend to keep in the trailer because they kind of go with everything and i would say what salt and pepper of course garlic powder chili powder usually paprika we use that a lot and what like oh like seasoning salt yep And And as far as like dry spices go and like a chicken stock or something, if we're going to throw it in the powdered chicken stock that you would put in that you could cook meat in. But, you know, really, you don't need a lot of fancy stuff. Like you don't need a full spice rack, certainly. No, you know what? If you want to add something in every trip or in a couple of bottles, they stay fine in the trailer. So Mm -hmm. whatever you like for seasoning is what you can put on this. You don't have to put what we say. And I never really cook my recipe anyway. I always eyeball it. Mm -hmm. And I'm usually good nine times out of (laughs) ten. Okay, so our last recipe, again, perfect for using leftovers. It is a huge favorite of ours. We love pierogi nachos, which is essentially like it sounds. It's not nachos made with pierogies instead of tortilla chips. So uh, this is a perfect one for the cast iron because it gives a really good brown to the pierogi. You just throw some oil in a pan, you throw those pierogies in, you arrange them, You have to watch the first little bit as you're doing the uh, pierogies to make sure like they're not getting burnt and you're flipping them over. But once both sides are brown, then you turn the heat down a little bit and then you chop up onions, peppers, whatever you want on whatever nacho toppings you want. You could do those first too if you like them a little more well done, but I like like a crunchy onion on my nachos. So we throw them in after the pierogies are cooked and you just toss them in there, stir it around, let it get warmed up. And then you throw on a bunch of shredded cheese and you put the lid on until the cheese melts and dinner's done. And we serve it with, you know, guacamole, sour cream, salsa, or we throw some tzatziki dip on it. And you just, you throw some pierogies on your plate and you grab a knife and fork and you throw your toppings on and you eat it like nachos. It's fantastic. Can I give a shout out to our American cousins? 
Yeah. I love American sour cream in a squeeze bottle. Oh, like the Daisy sour <laughs> oh, cream? Oh, Daisy sour cream in a squeeze bottle. If only they could open up the border again, it would be on like my top five things I'd want to buy if I could go back over. And that just makes it so easy to serve at the campsite when it comes out of that squeeze tube. It's it's not any more or less processed than any other kind of sour cream. It, it's the same consistency, but it's so clean when it comes out. Yeah, if anybody listening in the States wants to figure out a way that that you can ship us like daisy sour cream in a squeeze bottle and Kerrygold Irish butter and maybe some Zatarans, <laughs> we love Zatarans, the Zatarans like sweet cornbread mix. They, we have a list, a standing list of stuff that we go down to the States specifically to buy so we can bring it back to Canada because you guys have so much cooler stuff food wise in the, in the grocery aisles than we do up here. And it's just like so exciting when we get to go stock up. And yingling beer. And mm-hmm. then if you're like, and especially if you can get to the southwest u.s and go in and look at the barbecue sauces you have like oh yeah man and salsas anyways i've gone on a bit of a tangent but i <laughs> i miss my squeezable sour cream and yingling beer hopefully soon hopefully soon hey vaccines started this week so maybe cross our fingers next summer we'll be able to to get back down again. Oh, one more thing I wanted to mention about cast iron is pretty important for women and children too, is keeping up with iron intake and and cast iron actually does add iron to your food. So if you are deficient in something like that, it's a fantastic way to easily add more iron into your dishes. So I just wanted to throw that out there, but that's it. That's our list of our five favorite cast iron easy 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 meals yeah and if you're in canada and rv season is over for you give these a try over the christmas break and perfect them and tweak them out for your family and let us know what you like to put on your stuff because i think we're always looking for new ideas too yeah absolutely if you use any of them please message us on instagram uh send us an email to hello at rvcanucks.com let us know how you enjoyed it what changes you made to make it your own because we will we can even add those to the blog for variations you know listener variations variations that people can uh, use when they pull up these recipes and give them a try. So that's it. Next week, we are going to delight you with another RV quick tip to help you travel better. As mentioned, it is December, so we are kind of laying low this month. We have some home projects on the go. We're currently, we Mm -hmm. have no kitchen sink. We're currently replacing our kitchen cabinets with a delightful set I picked up for $500 on the buy and sell. So new kitchen for us, or new to us kitchen, I guess. And uh, because of that, we're doing some shorter episodes in December. So Tune in next week for an RV quick tip. Have a good week. Bye-bye. Bye.